Uh, Professor Lan and I were discussing on the way over that my first trip to Vietnam to uh, educate the, uh, on lung function testing was in 2005. So I've been coming here 18 years. Maybe you were babies when I've been coming here. I don't know. Uh, about 10 or 12 years ago, Professor Lan and I did a countrywide training that was sponsored by the World Health Organization on how to perform spirometry. At the time, there were very few spirometers, even in Vietnam, uh, but there's a pretty high prevalence of smoking and COPD and everything, so we wanted to make sure that they were available. <coughs> there may have been five to ten locations that were even performing spirometry, and Dr. Land's network now has about 250 places that are performing spirometry. So who is this Dr. Professor Matram that comes and sees you, huh? Uh, they can call me Dr. Lung, right? No, I don't, lung function. <laughs> Um, I'm uh, uh, the, an associate professor of medicine. I was the technical director of the lung function lab at the Mayo Clinic. And I volunteer in several capacities with the American Thoracic Society and the European uh, Respiratory Society. Currently, we're working on a lung volume standard, and we're also working on a question about ethnicity on PFT interpretations. And uh, not only do I volunteer in the pulmonary area, but I also volunteer in the laboratory area. So I'm the immediate past president of an organization called the Clinical and Laboratory Standards Institute. They partner with ISO to make sure that laboratories perform tests well. All laboratories, microbiology, histology, everything. And then I have a textbook on lung function testing that is used worldwide. But when I walk into the hotel in Ho Chi Minh City, they know me as Mr. $100,000 Man. <laughs> because a hundred thousand dong is Mak Tram. <laughs> <laughs> Matram, yes. <laughs> there it is, right here. Matram. <laughs> uh, Professor Lan is well known to everyone throughout the country. 
Um, she is the World Health Organization Gold and Gina Ambassador for Vietnam. She's Vice President of the Vietnam Respiratory Society and Chairwoman of the Ho Chi Minh City Society of Asthma, Allergy, and Clinical Immunology. And she has been a mentor to many. And I've known her for 20 years. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Kwan is also a physician at the University of Pharmacy in Ho Chi Minh City and other uh, activities and he is the organizer of all this and keeps us all in order. <laughs> uh, our um, tour is sponsored by Vitalograph, a spirometer company, and they gave us an educational grant so that we could come to a variety of cities and do a follow-up to our original World Health Organization training program that we held 10 to 12 years ago. And Getz is the Getz Medical is the local distributor for Vitalograph, and they have two spirometers here for us, so we can actually uh, touch a spirometer and understand how it functions. So our initial program covered 57 provinces and we trained, I believe, over 600 physicians and other individuals in spirometry testing back in the years 2009 through 2010. So there I am, young guy, <laughs> doing spirometry training. So lung function, measuring lung function is a very measurement of a very dynamic organ within the human body. There are very few tests in medicine where the subject has to cooperate in getting a good test result. They might have to take a deep breath for an x-ray, or they might have to not eat a sugared product the night before to get a fasting glucose. But spirometry, or the measurement of lung function, is the only test where they have to actively participate to make sure that they get a good result. So the American Thoracic Society and the European Respiratory Society set the standards on how to perform the test and how to interpret the test. And both how to perform the test and how to interpret the test have new technical standards that were written within the last couple years. So what is a measurement of lung function? There are some basic um, numbers or parameters that we measure. One is the vital capacity and that is the largest breath 
that we can take until we're all the way up here until we blow all the way out empty. And if you do it forcefully, then it's the force vital capacity. It was first described by a surgeon back in the 1800s. Now the measurement of lung function has been around since the Greeks and the Romans, but from a modern perspective, the first time it was described was in 1840. <laughs> And, and Dr. Hutchinson made the direct correlation that your vital capacity was linked directly to all-cause mortality. So he termed it your vital breath, and it was later coined your vital capacity. The, uh, if you blow, if you measure the amount of air that is blown out in the first second, then that's your forced expiratory volume in one second, or FED1. There are other parameters that can be measured also, and some spirometers will list a wide variety of parameters, one of them being the mid-flows. And sometimes we're taught in medical school that the mid-flows are equal to or related to small airways disease. But the ATS ERS says this test has so much variability, this parameter has so much variability that it really isn't useful maybe in young children but otherwise not useful in older individuals. So we have two real key parameters. We have the force vital capacity, how much air we blow out completely, and how much air we blow out in the first second, and the dividing of those two numbers is expressed as a ratio. And if the ratio is low, you have obstruction. And we, when we talk about uh, interpretation later this afternoon, we will look at this parameter and why it's important regardless of what reference equation you use. There are two ways that the data is displayed. There is a volume time curve, which was only available initially with Dr. Hutchinson's uh, spirometer, how much air you blew out in a volume time perspective. <laughs> And there is the flow volume loop, 
and the flow volume loop was originally described by Dr. Bob Hyatt, Dr. Robert Hyatt, at the Mayo Clinic in 1959, and he was my mentor. And really, as physicians and other practitioners, we really look at the flow volume loop and the characteristic shapes of the flow volume loop rather than relying on the volume time curve. And one of the things that the new technical standards stated was that they would really like people to do the inspiratory side of the flow volume loop. This portion right here because it actually can act as a quality indicator as to whether or not the subject took a deep breath initially. So we're going to learn a little bit more. So I'm going to go into the next talk, if I can find it. <laughs>